I had a totally different video planned, but my girlfriend's best friend Shelby just had to tell me about this drama going on on Twitter between Jeffree Star and Thomas Halberd, so now I gotta talk about it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about helping you with your mental health. But what I like to do is pull things from the YouTube community or pop culture to try to teach you some pretty valuable lessons about improving your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Because yeah, I am not a drama channel. I am not here to spill any tea but like, there's so much, there's so much. Like if you are someone who watches the beauty community, like watch it and learn from it, please, for the love of God, because there's so much to learn about how to not have friendships and, and just how to have healthy relationships by doing the opposite of what they're doing. So anyways, um, yeah, my girlfriend's best friend, Shelby, we have a little group text and like, she said, oh my God, there's stuff going on on Twitter between Jeffrey and Thomas Halbert. And I'm like, oh, I don't wanna look. And then I was like, okay, I'll look. And I looked, I'm like, what is happening? And I saw a million tweets from Jeffree Star. So I went over and I'm like, who is this Thomas Halbert guy? And I went over to check out his video. And it's called like racism, sexism, and silence. So a lot of you don't know this about me, but I'm actually half African American. And I'm not gonna talk about the that kind of stuff that Thomas Halbert was talking about. Like just real quick opinion on this. It seemed like a lot of virtue signaling and I just don't have a way to really tie that into mental health. So I'm gonna stay away from that, but that's my opinion on it real quick. So anyways, there's, there's two main topics I wanna to talk about in this video and I hope that you can learn from it. So the first topic I'm gonna to talk about is kind of exploiting your own mental illness for sympathy or as a form of manipulation. So I'm gonna start this video out by telling you a, a story and I'm gonna to try to shorten it as much as possible because I know I'm long-winded, but please stay for this story because there's a very valuable lesson to be learned. Like a lot of you ask me so many questions and I've done so many things throughout my life to improve who I am as a person and improve my mental health. So at the beginning of Thomas Halbert's uh, video, he like just casually tosses in that he had an eating disorder. Like in the first couple minutes, he just casually just kind of boop, just tosses it in there. And I'm like, okay, where's this going? And like, it had absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the video. In ways that I was conditioned and raised was like a, per a perfect example is when I would starve myself when I knew I was hungry which led into something more serious, which is an eating disorder. And I'm like, what the heck, dude? Like, why did you, why did you just throw that in there? You know what I mean? Like, and if you don't know what I mean, here's what I mean with this story. So those of you who are just now meeting me, I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I've been clean and sober for six years. And in my addiction, I racked up three tickets in one week, right? Or two weeks, something like that. For no insurance and no registration, because for me it was more important to buy drugs than pay for insurance and registration. So I racked up all these tickets, and uh, when I got sober, I went to California, I wasn't paying on the tickets, so I moved back, there was a warrant out for my arrest, I paid that off, and then like I had to start paying off the tickets, which was thousands of dollars. And they wanted $200 a month from me. And like the job I was working at the time, there was absolutely no way like that I could pay that. Like I have a son, I'm living in a ghetto apartment and barely scraping by, riding on the bus. Like there's no way I could afford $200 a month. So I call them up and I'm like, yo, is there any way you can work with me on this payment? And they said, you would have to come down and talk to a judge for them to lower that monthly price. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I like took a day off work. I went down to the courthouse and I had to like wait around for a while in, uh, in order to meet with the judge and ask him to lower that 200 down to something that was actually like reasonable for me to pay monthly, right? So as I'm waiting, like as somebody in recovery, as somebody who's trying to be a better person, like, I, I had to realize that I manipulate a lot. Like I am one of the biggest manipulators on the face of the earth. And if I wanna be a better person, like I need to quit doing that. But sometimes my brain doesn't really have a good judge of what's manipulating and what's not. So here's a tip, call people and ask them, all right? This is something that I was taught. So um, I got clean through 12 step program. So I had a sponsor and I, I called him up and I called this dude up. I'm like, hey, 
I'm about to go into this, uh, to talk to this judge, and I just wanna ask you if you think this is manipulative. So here's what my plan was, okay? Like I heard so many stories of people like going in to talk to a judge, and at about, and at this time I had like a year and a half sober, and people were always said like, yeah, I went in, and I talked to the judge, I told him that I'm clean and sober now, and you know, the judge was like, oh, I had a cousin who got clean and sober, so yeah, we're just gonna get rid of all your charges. Like I heard these stories. So like, I was like, well, maybe I should do that. But if you remember, my my uh, tickets had nothing to do with drugs or alcohol, really, right? So I called my sponsor up and I'm like, hey dude, like, do you think it would be manipulating the judge if I told him, I said, hey, you know, I'm really sorry about this, I'm a year and a half sober now, I was making a lot of bad decisions, like, would it be manipulative if I just casually tossed that in there, right? And my sponsor's like, yes, of course it would be. And I'm like, all right, you're an idiot, bye. And I hung up on it, right? And I, what I did was I called like 50 other people. Like, do you do that? Do you ever like ask a ton of people the same question and you just wait for the one person to give you the answer that you want? Well, thank God I hang around people, again, who I, I always tell you to hang around with, people who tell me what I need to hear and not what I wanna hear. So I called like 50 people and they're all like, yeah, Chris, that's manipulative. And I'm like, Ugh, right? But like, think about that. It is manipulation. Like, I would have been manipulating that judge if I just tossed in there that I'm a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery. It had nothing to do with my, my tickets at all, really. Like, and and that would have just been a bad, a bad character um, action on my part. You know what I mean? So like, this is something that I'm really, really passionate about because like when I see people do that, there's a lot of conversation right now with all the better help stuff going on. Like, are YouTubers exploiting the mentally ill fans? Are uh, YouTubers faking mental illness? Are they doing this? So like, I think it's important to have this conversation. I just want to kind of give you some context from my experience. By the way, some crazy stuff happened and the judge actually lowered uh, my payment down to $50 a month. I actually still pay it to this day, the minimum payment, and I do it as a reminder to myself about the screw up I used to be. I need to go and make sure I paid it this month. But anyways, so going back to Thomas Halbert, I do not like how he just casually tossed in that he had an eating disorder. Like, what was the purpose of that, Thomas? It had nothing to do with the rest of the video. Stop it. Stop it, Thomas. Now, the second point that I wanna make is like, if you are watching this, if you are watching this video, cut out the people in your life who are constantly involved with drama. Like, I just made my video the other day, I think yesterday, about Manny MUA's comeback and the drama around World Mental Health Day and all that, and like, I, I, like I'm upset. Like, I've just been plunged into this beauty community and it's driving me nuts because Back in my past, back when I was very mentally unstable, I hung out with all of the drama queens. I was a drama queen. I always hung out with people who constantly had chaotic stuff going on in their lives. So basically, like you can go over on Twitter, I'm not gonna dive into all this stuff, but Thomas Halbert goes over to Jeffrey's house to kind of talk with him about Jeffrey's like racist past, and I'm not here to judge any of that stuff, um, but like, like, what happened was Thomas was texting Laura and Manny while he was at Jeffrey's and then like uh, Jeffrey outed, uh, like confronted Thomas about it and Thomas was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And, that, and then Thomas came out with this video. So anyways, go check out Twitter if you wanna get all that tea, but I'm sure the other drama channels will. But like, there was just constantly drama going on. Like you guys, I am not lying to you. Like I cut all those people out. I cut them out. Like I have like four really good friends who I talk to on a regular basis. Like four, okay? Like I have a lot of family members who I don't even talk to on a regular basis because all they do is gossip and talk drama. So. I think that might actually be why I get a little like defensive when people say like, oh, you're turning into a drama channel, Chris. Like, no, 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 no. I'm trying to teach you lessons about the drama that's going on. So if you have friends that are constantly having drama in their life, cut them out of your life. Like I'm telling you guys right now, if I would have met my girlfriend and she had this type of drama in her life, I would not have dated her. I wouldn't have dated her. I'd be like, yo, sorry, I cannot handle that stuff. You know what I mean? Now, what's funny is, we joke around, my girlfriend and I, that uh, she's like my uh, my PR team, right? So I often run like ideas past her. Sometimes I even run like 
comments pastor? Like, should I make this comment or should I make this reply? Should I tweet this? You know, by the way, that's another pro tip. If you have a problem keeping your mouth shut, run it by somebody, okay? So um, her and I were talking about this video and I was telling her, I was like, yeah, this is what it's gonna be about. The lesson's gonna be about cutting out people who have drama in your life. And I told her this, so you, you probably see it on the screen right now, but I said, so FYI, when I blow up, I refuse to be friends with Jeffrey. And uh, then I was saying, no, you'll see it's a lesson. Cause she gets worried that I am going to go too much into the drama and I'm gonna reach and not make it about mental health. So then she says, LMAO, what if he buys you a, cor uh, a car or house or a corgi? So those of you who don't know, I freaking love corgis and I want a corgi so bad. So I'm like, ugh, then I'd have to set up healthy boundaries. And then I, I got the idea, this is how my ideas come. I was like, that'd be such a good video. How to be friends with Jeffree Star. And I'm like, OMFG, remind me to make that video sometime. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think that'd be a great video. Like how to be friends with somebody like Jeffree Star who constantly has drama around it. If you think that would be a good, interesting video, because like I told Tristan, like, it would, it would be about setting up boundaries, like constantly setting up boundaries with him. So if you think that would be an interesting video, let me know down in the comments below, all right? But aside from that, aside from that, like let me know down in the comments, like how do you feel about people like just casually tossing in their mental illness? Like just, just oh, here you go, here you go, here's my mental illness. Like how do you feel about that? Like. And, and I wonder, like, and tell me if I'm being contradictory as somebody who tries to increase awareness. Like, am I being hypocritical? Like, I don't know, like, tell me down in the comments. I got thick skin, but I wanna hear your thoughts on that, okay? Anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. We just got a new Patreon supporter and now they're added to the list. So if you would like to support the channel over on Patreon, help me spread a message of hope, make sure you click or tap on that Patreon icon right there. All right, thanks so much for watching. Get rid of the drama and I'll see you next time.